Cartoons, the animated frontier. These are the voyages of the Cellcast podcast. It's continuing mission to explore strange new cartoons, to seek out new animation styles and new creative storytelling methods, to boldly go where so few ever go again. Welcome to another episode of The Cellcast. Joining me today is a man who, uh, well, he was raised by a pack of wolves. Not that that surprises anyone here. Welcome, Jacob. What did you say? Precisely. (laughs) Why, thank you. Let me use our co-host, a man who just was trying to kill a forest god. Welcome, Drew. Well, you try and you fail. Yeah. (laughs) Anyway, uh, how are you doing tonight, Jacob? I had, the, I had the most amazing weekend. I got to go hang out with a bunch of single friends and some people I never met before. And I go to the Austin area for a treat, and we hiked. The, we hiked a, a state forest and walked like nine point seven miles, or hiked it, and that was incredible. And I was dead tired for you know the day after, but. Uh, other than that, it was great. Be like, you, you stop in Bucky's like three or four times throughout the day. Cause there's a Bucky's where this place was. And because you're addicted, I'm not addicted. People are other people are. It's just fun walking into Bucky's. <laughs> Whatever <laughs> helps you sleep better at night. My friend. Now, if Bucky's mascot was a dog, you know, that'd be a different story. Mm-hmm. Either ways, uh, doing pretty good work is, you know, getting more of a pain in the neck because people keep deciding they don't want to come in that day. Uh, Tell us how you really feel about it. (laughs) Uh, It's, it makes works a little more interesting because you're having to balance everything else. And it's always fun. It's, it's, it's frustrating, but it's at the end of the day, it's like, okay, I I can, I can do something else rather than what I do uh, on my normal. So I think in a way it challenges me, even though it's most of the time it frustrates me. Uh, Other than that, I'm doing very well. What have you been up to? How you? How are I, you doing? Come I'm on. actually doing pretty good. I'm doing good, Jacob. <laughs> I, I've had a pretty nice week. I've had a little bit of extra time and been making up some, uh, taking care of some stuff for okay. forward-looking things for the podcast that I don't want to get into right this second because okay. I like things to be a surprise. Gotcha. But it might be coming up in the middle of December. We'll see. Anyway. Gotcha. I haven't even told you what I'm talking about. Okay. Although you know part um, of it. Maybe. But anyway. So, yeah, that's pretty much uh, it for me. Uh, Before we jump into what we've been watching, last week's trivia question, posted to the wrong page, uh, I asked, who wrote the English language version of Princess Mononoke? What's your guess? Before Uh, I read the answers. Oh, come on. And it is credited. I saw his name in there. Oh, okay. I just gave you a hint. I just said I said it was a he. Yeah. For some reason, I keep thinking, um, oh, what's his name? He he did Kill Bill and all that. Nope. Nope. It's not Quentin Tarantino. Quentin Tarantino. That's who I was thinking. It's not of. Tarantino. Okay. Then who? We're on that in the trivia, actually. Okay. <laughs> Neil Gaiman. Neil Gaiman. Was the, That's right. Was, yeah. the, was the writer of the English language version, which Josh Adams uh, posted and got it correct for 10 points. Ding. Uh, he says, uh, even though his name was removed for dumb reasons on the G kids release, it is there. I saw it. Hmm. So there you go. Uh, Jack Cornwall in, uh, answer to Josh says, uh, you beat me to it. Well played. Josh says it helps. I knew exactly where he posted it. (laughs) And then Ryan Ashley wall says to Jack Cornwall, you disappointed me. Which Jack Cornwall posted a gift that says, I'll do better, I promise. And then Jack says to Ryan, I'm not as good as Rachel on the phone. Much oh, much better on a computer, especially when killing James is the goal. Ha ha. That is actually a reference to uh, Ryan Ashley Wall's Raw Quiz Show that is on the Pop Americana network oh, okay. that we're on. Gotcha. Along with, of course, the other network we're on. Uh, Culture Box. Yes. 
I don't want to have that bad a brain fart. <laughs> uh, anyway, so yeah, that's was last week's. I will. Uh, should I put the next trivia question on now, or wait till the end of the episode? I probably wait till towards the end of the episode. I'll say it at the end of the episode. So uh, if you want to know what to answer for next time, wait till the end of the episode. Anyway, Jacob, what have you been watching? What have I not been watching? What have you not been watching? Well, is that an easier question? <laughs> I know what you've not been Go watching. On. You've not watched Mandalorian season two. True. You've not watched uh, the Eternals. We just talked about that. Right. You've probably not watched What If because you're waiting on me to play catch up. Am I right? Oh, uh, what? Because you are. You don't quite have internet yet. I'm working. You're working on it. I'm right? working on it. Yes, I'm working I, I, on I'm, it. I'm not. This is not a dig. It's just like I know you don't have. <laughs> Yet, but I know it's coming. Uh, yes. <laughs> and I know you haven't watched... <laughs> you, you haven't watched Loki yet, have you? No, I haven't watched Loki yet. That's a good thing you didn't see a shirt I bought. Okay. you wouldn't get the joke. No, I wouldn't. Probably. I would probably get it because the internet's there. They tell you everything. Yeah, but Gator Loki is a thing. That's all I'm yes, saying. I, I, yes, I know of later Gator Loki. <laughs> all right. So, in the things I have watched... Okay. <laughs> So, as most people know, I'm a huge fan of Tangled. I pretty much yearly will watch this film every once in a while. Still amazing film. I yearly still love every once in a while. Gotcha. Every once in a while. Probably every year. Every. All right. So, I've watched Tangled. Really great film. If you have not watched it, what are you doing? Go watch the film. It's better than Frozen. Either way, fight me on it. I'm not <laughs> fighting you on a thing. I just I know. have things to talk about when we get to my section. I know. I have Disney Plus. You have Disney Plus. You knew I have Disney Plus. I know I have Disney Plus as well. <laughs> All right. Uh, so uh, speaking of Tangled, I finished uh, Tangled series or Rapunzel Single Adventure. I finished it uh, this afternoon. Because and I'm slow. No, it's <laughs> no, because I, I was just like, oh my gosh, I got to finish this. So season. Because I'm slow. It's my fault you haven't gotten finished with it yet. <laughs> All right, so I finished it. I finished season two. Oh my gosh, amazing. There again, if you have watched it currently, please do not post anything on Cellcast social media because we don't want anybody else to be spoiled or definitely this guy being spoiled because I'm pretty sure he probably, like, what? I know (laughs) some things because, like you said, the internet is a thing. That is true. And due to my research, I have run across a couple pictures, though I have no context. Something about blue hair. I just figured she got it. She got comfy with Hades during the connection with <laughs> Kingdom Hearts Three. She picked up some of his fire. I don't know. I don't know. Oh my gosh! Okay, that, that's fan fan art. I know it. Next week, this, this, month, this month's Patreon exclusive artwork: Cass, Cass, and Hades. Hades. <laughs> Okay. Uh, I, I should oh say, gosh. That, that me saying that is, is not mean in any way, shape, or form oh. that the artwork that Jacob will actually get around to posting this month sometime, it will be Hades and <laughs> but, but it will be related to one of those characters. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are so, you telling me I shouldn't look at the artwork as I post No, it? no, 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 no. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that at all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, because <laughs> that's gonna get awkward. Like it's okay, gonna be related to look at it. It's I'm, gonna be related I'm to right the movie clicking, hitting save. <laughs> it's gonna be related to Tangle the movie, not Tangle the series. Okay, okay, all right. So yeah, look okay. forward to that if you are a Patreon subscriber. Okay, all right. So uh, finish that season three is amazing. Uh, it's about reconnecting and making sure everything's back together, but, uh, it's really good. It's got great villain reveals and who you think the villain really isn't the villain. Uh, and you find it like, Oh, this is a villain. Oh crap. This oh, is going to get good. <laughs> I think I know who the villain is. Cause they thought we came across him in the research for one earlier season one episode. Uh, maybe at least a name. Yeah. Pretty sure. Uh, so yeah, I watched that and, uh, yeah, definitely recommend it there again. Please do no spoilers in the social media. You have watched it. Uh, and then I, I stumbled across a black Friday, black Friday movie deals and I bought quite a few movies 
And uh, I bought, what was the one that I didn't have, like a Bug's Life. I didn't have that as part of the Disney collection. So now I do, or Disney Pixar movie. Yeah. Uh, right. So yeah, then then I got, uh, what was it? So I picked up quite a few, quite a few. And uh, one of them was the the trilogy of Bad Boys films. Mm. And I love the Bad Boys films. They're Bad great. Boys, boys. Exactly. What you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? <laughs> Either way. So yeah, uh, I decided to watch uh, Bad Boys 2 on Blu-ray. And uh, I still love the film. I just have, it's the idea. It's like, okay, these are, quote, these are cops who are trying to, you know, bust the bad guys, but doing all the wrong things to do it. <laughs> I was like, I would the entire time be like, that's against protocol. That's against procedure. Be like, you don't have a warrant for that. <laughs> but either way, what either part of bad boys, bad boys, what you want to do. <laughs> Did I not pick up? Yeah. <laughs> but either way, it's just like, it's, I, I still find it fun. It's uh, Michael Bay is still a great director. He just likes to blow things up a lot and a lot of gunfights. So either way, that is all I've been watching. What about you, Drew? Well, Starting off with uh, some stuff you aren't aware of. Okay. There is a show on Netflix. It is unfortunate. It is an anime, and right now it is still subtitle only, which right there is kind of strange for Netflix. But right. there's one out there called, I think it's Comey Can't Communicate. I think it's the name of it. Comey Can't Communicate. It's about this girl who has social anxiety. Okay. That has caused her not to be able to talk at all in public. Okay. But she wants to make some, wants to make a hundred friends in high school. Interesting. Yeah. And technically we're following it from the point of view of uh, this boy who is, he's just trying to be friendly and of course falls in love with her because she's like the most beautiful girl in the school. Of course. Because that's how this works. Mm -hmm. And he happens to be, he happens to see her the first day of school because mm. their shoe lockers are near each other. And he happens to be sitting next to her in class. And he's also now the most hated boy by all the other boys because he's sitting next mm -hmm. to the cutest girl in the school. Right. And it's actually, so far, a very sweet story. I've only watched the one episode, but the shots of her when the anxiety kicks in and her eyes go wide, it's like the cutest thing ever. Okay. <laughs> I don't know a better way to explain it than that. But there's a part of that where her eyes go wide. You're like, oh, that's the deer in the headlights look. Mm -hmm. And then she starts moving fast <laughs> to get out of the situation. It's like, I know what you're doing. I'm not, I've not technically faced that, but I know why you're doing that. <laughs> okay. But it's, it's still, it's, it's cute. She's cute when she's doing that. But it's actually so far a good story. Uh, interesting note. Apparently the school is full of weirdos. Okay. So it's going to be a lot harder than the guy thinks it is to help her get 99 more friends for her. But yeah, okay. it's an interesting story so far, what I've seen. Um, also, because I have Disney Plus, mm -hmm. I watched something that was released for Disney Plus Day. What was that? Olaf Presents. Oh, okay. How was that? <laughs> interesting. Okay. <laughs> I especially liked the Tangled one. Where Olaf tried to replicate the smolder, <laughs> and it doesn't work at all. I think but I saw the, a clip of that. But then the one for the Lion King, because you, you remember how on the in Frozen Two when he's doing it, and he just stands off to the side and said, I, uh, "Anna's dead." Yeah, when he's explaining Frozen One. Mm -hmm. Well, he does that a couple other times. Anytime a character dies, so it becomes a running gag. Right. Well, he gets to Mufasa. Oh no! And he says. And Mufasa's dead. Only he didn't die immediately. He first got trampled on by tons by tons of wilderbeasts, and then got and and then tried to climb up out of the canyon, only to be caught by Scar. That he didn't die then either. He got thrown. He, he got thrown <laughs> off into the into the into the canyon, but he didn't die immediately as he had to fall a long distance. It's like, dude, stop! <laughs> you, this is already a traumatic death scene. You're kind of making it worse. <laughs> And it just, as well as it keeps going to all of a sudden, you, you know how when something starts is, is dark, but the way they keep going and the way they're talking just kind of makes it funny. Right. <laughs> that starts happening in this. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but also the shots of, uh, 
he does a quick little cutaway to himself as Mufasa while the little snow dude guys, I, can't, I don't remember their names. Yeah. Because I actually have not watched the short where they came out. But Frozen they're, Fever. Yeah, and they're running over him like the wildebeest. Oh my god! And you're so, you look at that going, you did not just do that. You did just do that, Ed. That's the cutest thing. That's the cutest death I've ever seen. Oh my gosh. <laughs> So, yeah, they they did, um, oh, and the Little Mermaid one is hilarious. Okay, I definitely have to watch that. So, yeah, when when you do get internet, that's one of the things you're going to have, one of the first things you're probably going to have to watch. All right. Uh, also, I have watched, uh, I watched the Simpsons uh, Disney Plus uh, anniversary thing. Yeah. It was bad. It wasn't funny. Hmm. It's one of those things where, yeah, I can see the cynicalness and the sarcasm in this. I, this is not that funny. Although Cobra Bubbles does make an appearance. Cobra Bubbles does? Yeah. He's in most Tavern when all this is going on. Okay. <laughs> but anyway. Mm. And then uh, there was one last show. And this might be bringing us into the news a little bit. Because due to one of the news items that released Friday for Disney Plus Day, mm-hmm. I went back to an old favorite show of mine that I've not seen in nearly 30 years. Yeah. I went back and started watching through X-Men 92, as I'm going to call it, to separate it from X-Men 97. Yes. Which is what they're calling the new one. And I absolutely am in love with it, despite the fact of how (laughs) bad the animation is. Oh, Oh, Saban did this show. Saban Saban did a very good job with the show, but they made it as cheaply as they could get away with it. Mm-hmm. But there's still some weirdness. Like you look at, it, you go, you spent a little bit of that money on that animation. Oh yeah, a little bit, a little I bit. I can see a little bit of animation. It's a little bit better than uh, some of this other stuff I've seen from this time period, but not quite. Right. <laughs> right. But I, what I realized is, I when I watched the 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 show as a child. Like most shows that we watch as children, I mm-hmm. think, you only watched it when you got home in time to watch it, so you just kind of just jumped around and skipped around all the different episodes. I didn't realize it was serialized. Okay. I am in episode five. Yeah. And each episode has led into the next one. I thought maybe the first two were just, you know, since they were a part one and a part two. Yeah. That that was just a two parter, and then starting from there, you know, they do an adventure, a story, like mm-hmm. you know, most superhero shows kind of do. You're right. Every single episode is like this. Like this whole thing is serialized, doesn't it? I I I'm glad I'm starting from the beginning because if I tried to start somewhere in the middle, I would be lost as a goose <laughs> in a feather fact in a feather pillow factory. <laughs> and then episode five, Sabretooth has. Snuck, I wouldn't say snuck, but due to the plans of Magneto, mm. the X-Men brought him into the mansion because they thought there was actually, because he, he was hurt. Mm-hmm. And uh, they don't know his connection to, they know him and Wolverine have a connection because Wolverine wants to get rid of him. Mm-hmm. But of course, I, as someone who has kept up with at least some of the X-Men knowledge, and right. comics knowledge, mm-hmm. I know things. Like, okay. Sabretooth and Wolverine's backstory. Yeah. How they're connected. Yeah. So when Dr. X, when Professor X, I said Dr. X, but Professor X is <laughs> using his, uh, his telepathy mm-hmm. to get into Sabretooth's mind to help calm him of his rages, as they call it. Yeah. You start seeing pictures of characters who, if you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> don't know who they are outside of the shot of Wolverine. You wouldn't know what they're what they are, but you know you see what I will later. What I know as later is Lady Deathstrike. Mm-hmm. The is and it is the mo- those look like the uh, version of her from later on in the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, a couple other characters and then Deadpool. Yeah, 
And I know Deadpool is part of the Weapon X program. Don't get me yeah. wrong. I did not realize he had existed before this show came out. Uh-huh. I thought he was a mid-90s creation. No. Oh, man. But no, he's actually... this Because this had to have been like very, fairly close to when uh, Rob Liefeld created him for New Mutants. It was fairly close. Backstory. And he's actually like the first of these people. It's him, the first the first shot of them seeing this is Deadpool and Wolverine Sans mask, of course. Mm-hmm. But Deadpool's in the mask because you can't draw that face. No. And plus I don't think that face has been revealed at that point. No. But I'm like I am just sitting there watching and I, you know the the epic theme song is ending. I read the name of the episode and look at it and go, that's Deadpool. <laughs> Wait, when does the show come out? 92? Deadpool's around in 92? Uh-huh. He's been around that long. Ah, this is awesome. <laughs> okay. He Is he late, Is he going to show up in the show? I don't think so. <laughs> I think this might be the only time, because I swear I would remember Deadpool. I mean, I know he wasn't the Deadpool that we know, that now. We know now. He was much more of a serious character. Yeah, he was more like just an assassin. <laughs> yeah. But it's like, I wonder if he's going to show up. And when he shows up in 97, because there's no way he's not showing up in X-Men 97 now, Mm -hmm. I realized, I knew this going into it. Oh, yeah. Are they going to go with the more 90s-esque Deadpool, where he's semi-serious, or are they going to go at least something around, I'm going to hope, Volume 4, where he was still funny to me? (laughs) (laughs) I don't know, it's just, it was a weird epicness, I'm I'm looking and going, is that Deadpool? That's Deadpool! (laughs) What's he doing here? He's not. She's not made yet. Oh yeah, he has made. He was like eighty nine, eighty nine, something 90. like that. Yeah. Anyway, uh, <laughs> that was a weird little geek out moment this afternoon. Okay. But yeah, that's what I've been watching. All right. So since I kind of gave you a nice little lead into the news, what do we got in the news? All right. So we got in the news. Uh, before we get into the Disney uh, Disney Plus Day information that dropped on friday i believe yes it was friday because right. you were on the road yes i was on the road which I is st- why we po- ended up posting the news twice exactly i stopped in bucky's and then i see all this news and like oh my gosh i gotta post this and then not realizing this guy already posted, I posted it. it an hour earlier yeah you did <laughs> so either way so um i never post news i left because jacob is technically in charge of our mm-hmm. social media right but i knew you were busy so I was trying to fill in. Which I appreciate. Fortunately, you didn't see I filled in for you. No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so you got a double dosing of, of uh, news on that day. So either way, uh, before I get into that, I uh, just learned that Shop Factory and Machine Media Advisor announced a new entertainment distribution deal with the beloved animated feature Fern Gully. The last, the last rainforest ahead of its... 30th anniversary. I know Drew has, you know, thoughts on this movie. Um, I've only seen half and a half hour of this movie. What? I've only seen a half hour of Fern Gully. Wow, we're going to change that. I know. <laughs> this is one of the ones we brought up when we first were talking about Agreed. this podcast. Agreed. So I know it's coming. Yeah, it will come. That was ne- never in doubt. That is true. All right. Oh. So uh, in head of its 30th anniversary, his announcement is made. Uh, Shop Factory. So Shop Factory will be re-releasing uh, Fern Gully, The Last Reinforced. And so, yeah, look forward to that. Uh, really get information later on to when it was going to be released, but it's being released through Shop Factory. So, yeah, look forward to that if you are a big fan of, Sher- of uh, uh, Fern Gully, The Last Reinforced. All right. So going into further news, what we were referring to earlier, what dropped on uh, Disney Plus Day. All right. So starting off. Uh, the second season of Marvel, Stu- Marvel Studios' What If animated, uh, original animated series is coming to Disney+. Plus. Uh, that should be... Okay, we got that. And then we have Marvel Zombies coming to Disney+. Plus. Uh, we have I Am Groot, which is an animated uh, original series mm-hmm. also coming to Disney+. Plus. Um, kind of tying back into what we were doing uh, pre-show. Uh, Marvel Studios' Spider-Man freshman year... An animated original series coming soon to Disney Plus. And then what this guy was geeking about earlier, uh, the Marvel Studios is going in and making all new episodes of X Men 97, which I think it's coming on 2022, 23. Yes, which gives me plenty of time to get through all five seasons of X Men 97. Yes. 
the theme song's back. Yes, exactly. Yes, exactly. And the character designs are out too, though I haven't posted them to the page yet, but they look awesome. Cool. Wait, there's they've already put the designs. Yes, they've actually someone posted the character designs. Oh wow! Okay, actual, and we know they're the actual character designs because the person was saying, "I'm proud to say it's me." Uh, I'm not surprised to be like if if you had that cha- opportunity to re- to design the X Men uniforms or X Men from '93, '92, and for this new series. Mm-hmm. Yes, thank you. I'm trying to bring it up. Okay, of course, I still love how they announce it with the meme. Oh yeah, there's no reason they had to use the meme. But I love that they did. Uh, thank you, Reddit, for letting me get to this faster. <laughs> so a, a lie, I, if I can find the pictures. Hmm. They, I yeah. thought it was going right He's currently it. on Reddit. Silly Reddit. Tricks are for kids. Well, you stupid thing. Not showing me what I want to see. Well, you can see Beast and Storm there, but that doesn't really tell, me, tell hmm. you anything. I'll find it later. All right. So, yes, if you are a fan of the original... Uh, Fox Kids, uh, X Men the Anime series came out in the early '90s. It's coming back in 2022, 2023 on Disney Plus. So get excited about that because I grew up watching that show, loved it. Obviously, Drew did as well. Oh yeah. So yeah, uh, get ready to get on to an epic theme song uh, again because they're bringing back the theme song. And I want played by an actual rock band. <laughs> Indeed. Instead of the MIDI we got, even though the MIDI is rocking too. Agreed. Uh, I remember as a kid uh, loving that theme song so much because we we uh, we timed it just right because we had we we turned the TV on, put a recorder on top of the television, and recorded the audio to it. So then we just play the audio anytime you wanted. <laughs> right. Okay. So live reaction to the character art because I got it up. Okay. They're Cyclops. Okay. Got it. Jean Grey. That's interesting. Yeah. Storm. Nice. Wolverine. Wow. Okay. That's that's cool. Professor X. Professor X. Was like, Professor X. Wow. Rogue. Rogue. Wow. Gambit. <laughs> okay, Gambit. Jubilee. Jubilee, yeah. Nice. Psylocke. Psylocke. Nice. I, I forgot that. I, I was. I, I've looked at this thing two or three times. I couldn't remember that. That's Psylocke. <laughs> uh-huh. Okay. And then... Uh, oh! Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler. Beast. Beast. And that's all of them. Nice. Very, very nice. Yes. And it looks so, like that was on Twitter. I was on Facebook. I was on Facebook. You know, I should share that. Yes, if you would. To our thing. So yes. other people can go and look at this as well. Exactly. Now i got to go find it again. All right. <laughs> so uh, with that said, let me go through a little more. Um, uh, apparently, the, uh, Tiana is getting a first, a first look concept uh, long-term musical musical series uh directed and is coming to disney plus in 2023 uh the series follows the crown princess of i'm gonna butcher this name uh manoa 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 uh the new adventures but the but her new orleans past oh, is I, not far away know. from her i have not actually watched uh princess and the frog yet yes okay all right so uh disney plus uh is going back to the fast pace uh, Mammal Mistopia of uh, Zootopia in Zootopia Plus is short uh, in a short form series coming to Disney Plus in 2022. Uh, step up to the plate and check out the first look at art for Disney's Win or Lose, an all new animated series coming to Disney Plus in the fall of 2023. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rev of Your Engines, uh, Owen Wilson and Larry the Cable Guy return as voices for. Uh, Light, uh, Lightning Queen and Mater for Disney Plus original series Cars on the Road, streaming in 2022. Uh, uh, this was a show I did not watch. I didn't watch it either. But uh, if you are a fan of The Proud Family, came out. I think that was in the early 2000s. I think so. I think so. Uh, it was after the point where I was not paying attention to Disney Channel, even though I now finally had Disney Channel. <laughs> right. Uh. The Proud Family, Louder and Prouder, uh, an original series starts streaming February 2022 on Disney+. Plus. And this is the one that got me. I was like, oh my gosh, they're doing mm-hmm. this. Uh, the reboot com- the reboot comeback, 30 years in the making, Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers, an original movie 
streaming spring 2022 on Disney plus. Yes. Uh, if you want go back, uh, go to our, go to our Facebook page and go look it up because they made a itty bitty tiny, uh, script that yes. looks like it's been used quite, quite a bit. It looks amazing. I'm sure it got passed around between all five. Oh Rescue yeah. Rangers. Yes. All right. So <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, so a big hero, uh, a big hero will rise Baymax, uh, a Disney plus original series will be streaming, uh, starting, uh, summer 2022. And the trailer for that is actually pretty funny. All right. So I'll check that out later. And yeah, that's all I have in the news except for, yeah, we're getting X-Men again. Woo! Yes, exactly. So that uh, looks like it's been coming to us in 2023. Can this come any sooner, please? It'll happen when it happens. This gives exactly. me, but this gives me plenty of time to get through all five seasons. <laughs> right. <laughs> because there's no, uh, admittedly, I'm watching like two or three episodes at a time now. Eventually I'm going to get to one a day, mm-hmm. maybe. Right. <laughs> one a week. You never know. It'll go up and down. This just gives me plenty of time. All right. So that is all I have in the news. So, we need to jump into the spoiler-free section yes. of our review for Princess Mononoke. Woo. You first. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> We're going uh, back in weird order. I don't know. Okay, throw me off, why don't you? Okay, I'll go first, then. <laughs> oh, I, got, I got it, I got it. All right, so Princess Mononoke, uh, I really enjoyed this film. It's really well done. Uh, it's It does have an environmental theme to it, which is great. In some ways, in some ways, it's more like, okay, let's beat your head over with it. But uh, I was saying protect, uh, protect what you got. Exactly. And and don't anger pig gods. Yeah, true. (laughs) You know, gods. Um, Gods. Yeah, gods. You can't see the quotation marks when we say that, but gods. gods. (laughs) So either way. I'm quoting it. It's this this voice. (laughs) Gods. (laughs) So. I enjoyed it. I do have a few problems with it. Uh, a lot of questions more. It's like, what in the world? Uh, because like, I, I, I'm going to ask you drew a question oh. later on and see if you can help me answer this riddle. So I will ask you later in the dislikes, I guess. Oh, and dislikes. Okay. Yes. So it's more of like trying to clarification. It's like, what does this mean? Cause I didn't understand it. And yeah, it means watch the Japanese version where they'll probably be explained less. Ha ha. Probably. <laughs> probably. Probably. But you must learn, you must understand all of Japanese culture over the past 200 years. <laughs> uh, okay. I'm joking. I'm yeah. joking. Yeah, let, let, let me, let me enroll a class at UT where I can just understand Japanese culture in six months. <laughs> or but, just watch Demon Slayer. That was good enough for me. Okay. All right. So <laughs> considering they're demons in this movie that had to be slain. I, that's so you, the should, first, you should watch Demon Slayer. That's, anyway, that's what I kept show. hearing and be like, when I'm watching this movie, it's like, oh, it sounds like the Demon Slayer show yes. that people keep talking about. And uh, apparently it's very place, popular. Except this technically takes place in an earlier era from Demon Slayer. But anyway. Either way. Uh, yeah, whatever committed. Yes. Uh, it's 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 a bit bloody, a little gory. Uh, it's got it's got a little language here and there. Um, but overall, it's a good story. It's very well told. Uh, the ending is, uh, questionable in some fashion or form, but trust um, me, we'll get to that. Yeah, we'll get to there. We'll get there when we get there. But, uh, yeah, would I recommend it? Yes. Is it, is it family friendly? Mm, I don't know about that. Mm, I think it's all right. It's a, it's all right. They, you know, it's got a good message. This, considering what one group of ladies, but most of the ladies in this. Oh yeah, are, that's true. That is so true. Answer a question. Yeah, that is but, true. <laughs> But there's nothing wrong with answering questions as long as you're truthful about things. Geek Devotion says, it's got big puppies. I mean, spirit wolves. <laughs> spirit wolves. <laughs> puppies. <laughs> puppies that will bite your head off. <laughs> or in the case of one could be like, I want to chew her head off. <laughs> <laughs> either anyway. way, either way. So, yeah, I, it's a good movie. It's a great movie. It's definitely worth a watch. Uh, definitely if you're an animation fan or an anime fan. Uh, definitely go watch this. This is a really, really, really well done movie. And uh, yeah. What about you, Drew? This is one of my favorite Studio Ghibli films, period. All right. I Understood. say one of because it's got to go up against My Neighbor Totoro. Yeah. Which is already competition. Yeah. Kiki's <laughs> Delivery Service. Yes. Yes. Also, competition. 
Agreed. Porco Rosso, which I just love because it's Porco Rosso, and I like the idea. Of, <laughs> I like I love the idea of pigs flying. Oink, oink. There was that was not a quotation mark. Uh, <laughs> Don't confuse people. Then sorry, my apologies. Uh, and there's a couple others that are up here, but this is one of my absolute favorites. All right, if not my favorite, this is the one I went out of my way and literally drove an hour and a half. To see in a movie theater. Wow. Because I love this film that much. Wow. I first saw it uh, years ago on DVD Mm -hmm. when I was first introducing myself to Studio Ghibli. Right. I remembered loving it then, but couldn't remember anything about it other than I loved it when Hmm. I, when uh, Fathom Events started doing the uh, Ghibli Fests Mm -hmm. they were doing. But for whatever reason, where I normally watch Ghibli Fest here in East Texas, which is closer, which is Studio Movie Grill and Tyler, oh. they weren't showing Princess Mononoke. Where were they showing it? I don't. I had to go to Longview. Oh, okay. Other side of Longview. Wow, okay. So, <laughs> I went a little out of my way to go watch this film in a theater because it deserved it. There's very few films, I will say this right now, that deserve a rewatch in a theater. This is one of them. Indeed. It is that good. And I um, I should have, I meant to go back and watch this on in, in the Japanese version. Because I have yet to actually watch the original Japanese version of this. But uh, this is still one of my favorites. And I've only watched the English dub. So maybe I'll get to the Japanese version and without whatever additions Neil Gaiman added to this mm-hmm. <laughs> to make it make more sense to us stupid Americans. Uh, I, maybe I won't like it as much. I don't know. Maybe I'll like it just as much because I've seen I've seen the version that somewhat explains what's going on. Uh, it's just a, such a good movie and I love this movie. I think anyone who should go watch it because it is an this is. If I were to point to a single solitary film that shows what animation can do. Agreed. It's this film. Agreed. There, there's a reason I've bought technically bought this film on Blu-ray twice. True. And I and one of them one. I gave to him. Yes. Thank you, by the way. You're welcome. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, Princess Mononoke is a movie I originally went to see thinking it was supposed to be Miyazaki's Disney princess film. And really should have realized what that meant. Because she is not a Disney princess, but no. technically, she can kick every single one of them, uh, but including in- Mulan. Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> including the Disney princess, I don't consider a Disney princess. <laughs> she she ha- might have a little more trouble with, like, either Rapunzel or uh, uh, Anna. Or Elsa. Sorry, Elsa. Wolves is all I'm going to say. <laughs> She's got brothers and sister wolves. <laughs> That is true. She <laughs> defeated. Well, let me rephrase. She didn't defeat a god. She s- kept a god alive <laughs> until he turned into a demon. That is true. Spoiler <laughs> alert. <laughs> <laughs> so, before I go and yeah, let's more <laughs> of this film for people who've not seen it, let's jump into the spoilers for this yes. right after this word, these words from our. Not really our sponsors, because one of them's us. And it's literally me in all three of these spots. Anyway, intermission time. Go for it. Don't forget that you can download... Download? Don't forget that you can't... uh, Don't forget that you can listen to us record the podcast live every Tuesday over on our Facebook page, The Cellcast our uh, Twitch channel, The Cellcast Gaming, and on YouTube at Cellcast. Also, don't forget to join our Patreon if you would like to support us monetarily. At $1, you'll get our everlasting thanks. At at our $5 tier, you can get some artwork from Jacob. And at our $10 tier, you can get bloopers for every every episode we've released that I've remembered to release them for. And you can get commentaries from different movies. So come check us out over there if you would like to support us financially. Each week on Stunning and Brave, hosts Chris Cowan of the Babylon Bee and Nate Henderson of Some Boring Budgeting Job confess their privilege 
spotlight stunning social media posts, and fabricate outrage, all while keeping you super woke and enlightened. They will make you laugh. That's right, you have no choice. Check out Stunning and Brave at stunningandbrave.net. Do you like Star Wars? I don't just mean the original trilogy. Along with that, I mean the prequels, the sequels, the anthologies, the animated shows, and of course, <laughs> who doesn't like Baby Yoda? Well, if you've been in the fandom for any length of time, you know how toxic the fandom can get. And if you'd like to be able to discuss a galaxy far, far away in a much more positive light, might I suggest searching out The Outer Rim, a Facebook group dedicated to all Star Wars, and check out their YouTube channel, which you can easily find at Pop Americana, which the podcast you're currently listening to is also a part of. To find that and more, check out the link in the description. The following is a spoiler-filled review for Princess Mononoke. Listener discretion is advised. Princess Mononoke, or as it's known in Japanese, Mononoke Hime, was written and directed by Hayao Miyazaki. The English version was written by Neil Gaiman. Cast includes Billy Crudup as Ashitaka, who played uh, Dr. Manhattan in Watchmen. Mm. Billy Bob Thornton, who played Jigo. And plays the character of Jack in Puss in Boots. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay. Minnie Driver was Lady Eboshi. And in Tarzan, she's the voice of Jane. Really? Yeah. I can hear that. Yeah. I, I After after watching this, I can definitely hear it. John DiMaggio was the voice of Gonza. This is the fourth movie in yeah. a row with John DiMaggio uh-huh. that we've reviewed. And three of them have been Miyazaki films. Indeed. But... Once again, along with Gonza, he was additional voices, but he was Bender Bending Rodriguez in Futurama, and Jake the Dog in Adventure Time, mm. and Waka in Final Fantasy X. Waka Waka. <laughs> Claire Danes was the voice of San, and in the movie Stardust, she plays Yvain, the Yvain? star that he's fall. He's the main character falls in love with. Ah, it's actually a good movie. I enjoy that movie. Uh, John Demita was the voice of Kuroku, and in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, he's the voice of Cars. Cars. As in a guy named Cars, because most of the characters' names in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure are either named JoJo or they're named after a Western rock band. So he's named after the Cars. Got it. Fala? Fala. (laughs) All right. Jada Pinkett Smith was the voice of Toki. Okay. And in The Matrix, she, or The Matrix Saga, she plays Niobe. Yeah. Gillian Anderson was the voice of Moro, a.k.a. Mama Wolf. And she was uh, Dana Scully in The X-Files. Oh. Keith David was the voice of Okoto, the narrator, and additional voices. And uh, I think Jacob and me both know him better as uh, a character from Gargoyles named Goliath. Ah. Yeah, that's true. That is so true. Kingdom Hearts Regulous. Connections. Of course. Once again, this is the fourth month week in a row I've read this. <laughs> John DiMaggio, who was the voice of Gonza and all the other things, he is Jacoby in Kingdom Hearts, which is one of the uh, zombies from the Pirates of the Caribbean level. Tara Strong, who was the voice of Kea in this, is the voice of Riku in Final Fantasy X, from Final Fantasy X. I have to say it specifically that way because there's two Rikus in Kingdom Hearts. Okay. And one of them I said last week. Oh, okay. Riku and Riku. Riku. And the games came, Final Fantasy X and Kingdom Hearts 1 came out around the same time. Okay. In fact, Riku, Final Fantasy X's Riku, was not in Kingdom Hearts 1 because uh, Tetsuya Nomura, the games director, was afraid people would get the characters confused. I can imagine. similar names. I can imagine. Anyway, Tress McNeil, who was additional voices in this, and I think she was actually the voice of the priestess from the very beginning of the okay. film. Okay. Oh essentially kicks Ashitaka out of the village. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's voice of Chip, the Queen of Hearts, Daisy Duck, Merryweather, and Kanga in Kingdom Hearts. Really? Corey Burton, who was additional voices in this, was <clears throat> Captain Hook, the White Rabbit, the Doorknob, Flotsam, Jetsam, Dale, Diz, Ansem the Wise. I said Dale twice for some reason. Yen Sid, MCP, <laughs> Santa Claus, Sark, Shan Yu, the Peddler, Magic Mirror, Ca- Claude Frollo, and Zeus 
in Kingdom Hearts. Okay. Adam Paul, who was additional voices here, was the tournament announcer in Kingdom Hearts 2. And Matt McKenzie, who is additional voices here, is the voice of Oron in Final Fantasy X and Kingdom Hearts. Oh. I don't think you know Oron. I think I've seen him before. Okay. And that's the end of my Kingdom Hearts connections. Alrighty. Alrighty. Alright, so for info and stuff, uh, if you want to watch this, uh, this movie is available for streaming on HBO Max. Mm-hmm. Uh, it has an IMDW, IMDP score of 8.4 out of 10. It was pro- production was by Studio Ghibli, distributed by Toho. Uh, over here in the States, originally produced by, uh, distributed by the Walt Disney Pictures. And currently is being distributed by G Kids. Its release date was July 12th, 1997 in Japan and October 29th, 1999 in the USA box office. So this movie in Japan, it made um, one point or 2.4 billion yen or conversion of 30, 23.5 million dollars. Uh, its U.S. opening was one hundred and forty-four thousand dollars on October thirty-first, nineteen ninety-nine. Its U.S. gross was four point eight million dollars, and its worldwide gross was one hundred and sixty-eight, sixty-nine point seven million dollars. Home release. There's a lot to go through here, so just bear with me. In Japan, the film was released on VHS by Bonavista Home Entertainment on July 26, 1998. Uh, on Laserdisc, also it was released on Laserdisc. If you know if you know what a Laserdisc is, um, it's the grandfather of all optical media. Yeah, boom. It was a record. It was a CD the size of a record, pretty much, but used a different technology to actually encode the pits and valleys. All right. Uh, so the film was released on DVD on DVD on Bonavis Entertainment in this November thirty November thirty first twenty first two thousand one with bo- with bonus content. Uh, let's see. By two thousand seven, Princess Mononoke had sold seven point four million Blu rays in Japan. Uh, that's on average. It's sold between uh right now that would be an equivalent of. Two hundred fifty nine point one million dollars. Uh, that's of two thousand seven in uh, the two thousands. Uh, Bonavis Entertainment with Miramax Home Entertainment announced the plan to release the film on VHS and DVD uh, in North America on August twenty ninth. Uh, initially, the DVD version of Prince Mon- Princess Mononoke wasn't going to include the Japanese language track, but later it was added. Let's see. Uh, Miramax Home Entertainment released the DVD in 2000 and um, December 9th, 2000 with the original audio track and the English dub audio, including trailers, documentaries, interviews from the English voice cast. Uh, it was released on Blu-ray disc in Japan in December 4th, 2013, Walt Disney Studio Home Entertainment released Prince of Mononoke on Blu-ray disc on November 18th, 2014. In its first week, it sold uh, 221,860 units. By November 23rd, 2014, it had grossed over and $502,000. Uh, in revenue, uh, it was later. It was later released in the Disney collection, the collected works of Hayao Miyazaki, a Blu-ray set released on November seventeenth, two thousand fifteen. G Kids reissued the films on Blu-ray and DVD on October seventh, seventeenth, two thousand seventeen. In total, Mononoke's Video releases in Japan and the U.S. have sold approximately $260 million worth in units. Okay. That's a lot of film. Yeah. Getting into the summary for this one. In the Muromachi era of Japan, which is around the time of the Portuguese originally found, uh, ran into Japan to give you it. 
error time error for this. Got it. Because I actually had to look that up because I was curious because of the, the some of the timetables I knew. But that, that's when this takes place. Right. An Amishi village is attacked by a hideous demon. The last Amishi prince, Ashitaka, kills it before it reaches the village, but it manages to grasp his arm and curse him before its death. The curse grants him some superhuman strength, but it also causes him pain and will eventually kill him. The villagers discover that the demon was a boar god, corrupted by an iron ball lodged in his body. The village's wise woman tells Ashitaka that he may find a cure in the western lands that the demon came from, and that he cannot return to his homeland. Heading west, Ashitaka meets Jigo, an opportunistic monk who tells Ashitaka he may find help from the great forest spirit, a deer-like animal god by day and a giant night walker by night. Nearby, men on a cliffside herd oxen to their home of Irontown, led by Lady Aboshi, and repel, or, yeah, and repel an attack by a wolf pack led by the wolf goddess Moro, whom Aboshi wounds with a gunshot. Riding one of the wolves is San, a human girl. Down below, Ashitaka enc- encounters San and the wolves, who rebuff his greeting. He then manages to rescue two of the men fallen from the cliff and transports them back through the forest where he briefly glimpses the great forest spirit. Ashitaka and the survivors arrive at Irontown, where he is greeted with fascination. Irontown is a refuge for outcasts and lepers employed to process iron and create firearms, such as hand cannons and matchlock muskets. Ashitaka learns that the town was built by clear-cutting forests to mine the iron, leading to conflicts with Asano, a local uh, daimyo, and a giant boar god named Nago. Iboshi admits that she shot Nago, incidentally turning him into the demon that attacked Ashitaka's village. She also reveals that San, dubbed Princess Mononoke, was raised by the wolves and resents humankind. Suddenly, San infiltrates Irontown to kill Iboshi. Ashitaka intervenes and quickly subdues Iboshi and San while they are locked in combat. Admits the hysteria, he is shot by the villager, by a villager, but the curse gives him strength to carry San out of the village. San awakens and prepares to kill the weakened Ashitaka, but hesitates when he tells her that she is beautiful. She decides to trust him after the forest spirit heals his bullet wound that night. The next day, a boar clan led by the blind god Okoto plans to attack Irontown to save the forest. Iboshi sets out to kill the forest spirit with Jigo. Iboshi intends to kill, give the god's head to the emperor, who believes it will grant him immortality in return for protection from Lord Asano, while Jigo desires the large reward being offered. Hmm. Ashitaka recovers and finds Irontown besieged by Asano Samurai. The Boar Clan has also been annihilated in battle, and Okoto is badly wounded. Jigo's men then trick Okoto into leading them to the forest spirit. San tries to stop Okoto, but is, but is swept up as the pain corrupts him into a demon. As everyone clashes at the pool of the forest spirit, Ashitaka saves San while the forest spirit kills Moro and Okoto. As it begins to transform into the Nightwalker, Iboshi decapitates it. Jigo steals the head while the forest spirit's body bleeds ooze that spreads over the land and kills anything it touches. The forest and Kodoma begin to die. Moro's head comes alive and bites off Iboshi's right arm, but she survives. After Iron Town is evacuated, Ashitaka and San pursue Jigo and retrieve the head, returning it to the forest spirit. The spirit dies, but its form washes over the land, healing it and lifting Ashitaka's curse. Ashitaka stays to help rebuild Iron Town, but promises San he will visit her in the forest. Iboshi vows to build a better town. The forest begins to regrow as a single Kodoma emerges from the brush. Getting into the trivia for this... When Harvey Weinstein obtained the North American distribution rights originally for Princess Mononoke, he approached director Hayao Miyazaki and insisted on a shorter version of the film that would be better attuned to American audiences. However, Miyazaki was was still so upset by the heavily cut version of Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind from 1984, which was originally released in America as Warriors of the Wind, that he angrily left the meeting. Several days later... Studio Ghibli producer Toshio Suzuki sent a katana sword to Weinstein's office with no cuts. With the words, no cuts, embedded into its blade. The film was later released in the USA in its uncut version. 
When asked about the incident in an interview, Miyazaki simply smiled and stated, I defeated him. I just love that. Uh, Director Hayao Miyazaki personally corrected or redrew more than 80,000 of the film's 144,000 animation cells. Wow. Also, this film is the last major animated motion picture to be filmed on plastic animation cells. Wow. How Miyazaki had intended this to be his final film before retiring. Its great success led him to do another, Spirited Away, in 2001. He has made more films in the years since then. Mm-hmm. Princess Mononoke replaced E.T. the Extraterrestrial from 1982 as the biggest grossing film of all time in Japan until later that year when Titanic came out. Somebody a love story in boats just gets people excited. Apparently. I'm sorry, Jim. I haven't seen Titanic, but I suspect it wasn't as good as this film. <laughs> I haven't seen it either. Produced for about 2.35 billion Japanese yen, it was the most expensive anime ever made at the time of its release. Mm -hmm. When the English dubbed version was screened at the Toronto International Film Festival, Hayao Miyazaki introduced his film to the audience saying, With Princess Mononoke, I intentionally threw out all the rules of entertainment movie making, which is why it will take some time for a true evaluation of this film to emerge. I hope you will all enjoy this, the ridiculously long, uh, uh, sorry, let me phrase that. I hope you will enjoy all of the ridiculously long two hours and 13 minutes. Mononoke means angry or vengeful spirit. Mm. Hime is the Japanese honorific word that means princess, which in the rules of Japanese grammar is placed after a person's name instead of before, as is the custom in many Western languages. When the film's title was translated in, into English, it was decided that Mononoke would be left as a name rather than translated literally. This also explains why Ashitaka mostly calls the princess by her real name, San, instead of Mononoke. That makes sense. When it was announced that the Miramax Buena Vista Region 1 DVD would only contain the English language dialogue track, which was adapted by Neil Gaiman, mm -hmm. there was enough fan protest to convince Miramax to delay the, ja the release in order to include the original Japanese language dialogue. I guess because they may have already gone into production of the discs, I'm I guessing. Guess. And they had to delay it so they could redo the the disc image, I'm guessing, so include the Japanese. That's, that's just a guess. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Princess Mononoke was the first animated film to ever receive the Japan, the Japan Academy Prize for Picture of the Year. Only one other animated film has ever received this award, which was Spirited Away. Hmm. Prior to 2007, there was no category for Best Animation of the Year, which that year was won by The Girl Who Leapt Through Time. Lady Eboshi wears red lipstick, making her one of the very few Studio Ghibli characters with visible lips. Hmm. There's something you've never thought about. No, <laughs> absolutely not. With a runtime of 134 minutes, it is the fourth longest animated film ever made. After Final Yamato in 1983, which was 165 minutes, the disappearance of Haruhi Suzumiya, which was in 2010, and mm -hmm. 162, 162 minutes, and the tale of the Princess Kaguya, which was in 2013, at 138 minutes. Japanese mythology tells that dogs and wolves are always male-voiced, and cats are always female-voiced, regardless of sex. For this reason, a man... Akahiro Miwa provides the voice of Moro, the mother wolf, in the Japanese version. His casting is perhaps also an in joke to his career as a female impersonator. Mm -hmm. In the English dub, however, Moro is, of course, voiced by Gillian Anderson. Mm -hmm. Neil Gaiman, when he was uh, translating the script, chose to simplify some plot elements to provide a cultural context for phrases and actions not well known outside of Japan. Specific terms like jib jibashiri and shishigami for example, are changed to the more general mercenary and forest spirit. On the English language DVD and Blu-ray, the subtitle options have a literal translation of Hayao Miyazaki's script in addition to Gaiman's adaptation. The creative teams for Star Wars The Clone Wars and Star Wars Rebels mm. cited San as an inspiration for Ahsoka Tano. These are, there are quite a few similarities between the two characters, such as their spiritual connection to nature and and life, as well as their fighting and movement style. That totally makes sense. 
as the forest spirit dies during the film, the lepers are shown to be healed. I didn't. I didn't catch that. I need to go back and watch that now that I know that. Uh, Lastly, when Ashitaka intervenes in the fight between Lady Eboshi and San, Eboshi exclaims that she's tired of Ashitaka's cursed right arm before shouting, let me just cut the danged thing off. I kind of censored myself there. Later in the film, Eboshi loses her right arm to Moro. Mm -hmm. If that ain't a coincidence. (laughs) Don't you think? Yeah. Isn't it ironic? Anyway, and uh, Josh uh, threw this in there. Uh, in the Japanese version, the uh, the main uh, Ashitaka's little sister, yeah, was uh, his wife in the original dub. Really? Yeah. Huh. Which brings us to our likes and dislikes. Our fir- my first like, if I may, go for it. I love the use of the CG for the demon worm things and the Night Walker. Indeed. Okay, so this is well, I wouldn't say it's early CG two D animation because. That technically is the 80s. True. And it, you can, because we have talked about it when we were talking about uh, The Great Mouse Detective. True. And a couple other films since then, we brought that up. The way it's used here, I think it's done a lot better here because the problem with all those other versions we brought up is you always know it's the CG part. Yeah. Because it doesn't match any of the animation of the rest of the film. Not really. It, the color coloring is there, yeah. But the well, it's usually too smooth or too too precise. I guess really is the, the word I'm looking for, right? But with the way they use it here, all the downsides that I would normally quote for all those other problems actually work to make it more ethereal here. Okay, uh, especially all the little worm things all over the uh, the boar gods when they're transformed into uh, demons and. How it shows up around it, Ashitaka's arm. Yeah. Uh, they move far faster than I think any person would normally animate them. Uh, so it kind of gives you the creepy crawlies, if we're being honest. Just a little them. bit. Just a little they, bit. They, they, they're, they're, they're there. And then the uh, it's very obvious that the Nightwalker was also had to be done with the CG mm-hmm. in order to get the more fluidic motion that the character needed for how it moved and all. Especially... As it was dying. <laughs> yeah, agreed. And turned into the giant, dark, evil blob that was killing everything. <laughs> um, and I just appreciate how all in every single one of those instances, it really makes it feel more like it's not physically happening, but you can see it. Because they do use a lot of the, the transparency effect for like all the little, I think they called them Kodamas. The, yeah. The little spirit, the four spirits. Yeah. And but the fact that how they also use them for all the the demon effects and uh, the Nightwalker, I just thought looked so. It, it it's like they took the, the that technique's weakness and turned it into a strength for this purpose. And I appreciate when you can actually do that because not everyone can th- think, do that correctly. In yeah. my opinion. So yeah, that's my first like. Okay, my first like is actually the the stunning animation in this film. Be like. The, from the, like you said, the, the way they animate the, the, the way the, the demons or the, the, the tree spirits move or whatever, mm-hmm. be like, those are really enjoyable. You, 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 you look at the, the, how they draw, how they draw people, how they draw people, their fluid animation stuff. Like, like when someone is running, you get that full cycle animation yeah and it, there's no, there's no like, you know, you're going by one twos, be like, you're going full, you know, full bore animation. No fun intended on that but uh but just be like the animation this movie movie is incredible you have the 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 boar tribe or the pig tribe who is uh ins- assaulting the 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 uh the the humans the amishi the, the amishi yeah like running that it'll be like mm-hmm. the obviously they could they probably use cgi in some in some cases in those but just the like the the fluidity of everything, be like it's smooth. There's no, um, there's no real shortcuts because back then, be like even though this was 1997, yeah, be like the CG was there, but it wasn't as it wasn't as dominant. It wouldn't have been used as as so frequently. Try three years later. Three years later, because yeah, our next film, hmm? uh, my neighbors the Amadas, is completely yeah. done in uh, CG animated. Yeah. 
2D CG animation, but still CG animation. Yeah. So you take that, you take the, the like this was all hand, hand drawn animation with a little CG assistance Mm -hmm. in some regards, but you're just looking at like a masterpiece of animation technique and character fluidity, uh, movement design, just incredible. Like the animation is top notch Mm -hmm. and there's be like it's studio Ghibli probably at its best. Yeah. So yeah, mine is just animation top down. Alrighty. My second like th- every single character in this film. I would agree. Is deep. Mm-hmm. There is not a shallowness to any of the character designs or any of the character stories. Yeah. Even as something as stupid as uh the guy who uh, Ashitaka takes back that's uh, Tor- uh Toriko's husband. Oh yeah. The one who has one of my favorite lines in any animated thing ever. My arm, it's healed. (laughs) No, it's still broken. (laughs) It's all of the, I mean, every single character you feel like actually had a, has a life. Yeah. agree. So many times, even, even Disney films run into this problem every once in a while. They just have people who are, and I'm, am I, when I say, characters i mean people who have voice lines yeah who are not just extras in the background with extra type lines characters who are actually adding to the story adding to the plot right even if it's in the most minute way possible they all feel like they're real people strangely enough indeed now i have at least some issues with how some of these are shown but uh especially in some of the more english dubbed lines but we'll get to that in a minute Mm -hmm. but yeah i just love how every single character here feels like they're if you'll pardon the phrase three-dimensional even though they're all two-dimensional physically true so yeah that's my second like all right my second like would be i had to think about this because i didn't get a chance to write everything down i didn't write most of mine down until right before right came over so Mm. i don't feel bad okay all right so my second like you know that, that moment where you be like you you have a thought, but when you try to say the thought, it doesn't come out. <laughs> That's where it's coming out on me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So my second like about this film is the almost a non traditional be like a lot with a lot of Miyazaki films, they don't use the very traditional like guy and girl hookup, they fall mm-hmm. in love. They wind up getting either married in the end or what have you. This doesn't really have that. No. And I appreciate I appreciate that for the the idea of it's like, okay, these two characters obviously do have a romantic interest in each other. But due to circumstances, they really can't be together. And I'll get that get into that in mm-hmm. my dislikes later. But I like the idea of two characters who obviously have romantic feelings towards one another, but they can't um, fulfill those obligations Mm -hmm. due to external and internal conflicts. So yeah, this idea that our, our two main characters uh, really can't be together. I know, I know that's, it's, it's weird, but it's very, it's very non-traditional. So uh, it's fair. Yeah. So my third, like is a quote. And I say, this is a quote because I say, this is my like for the simple reason that it shows how well the characters are thought out. Okay. This quote is from lady Aboshi. Okay. And it states, watch closely, everyone. I'm going to show you how to kill a God, a God of life and death. The trick is not to fear him. Okay. So here's the thing. For one thing, she is saying this while she's taking aim at the spirit god. Yeah. Uh, this, the, the deer, mm-hmm. essentially. And I watched that, and I heard her say that line and thought, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> and what's going to go very south for you, and I knew it was going to go south because this is like the third time I've watched this film. <laughs> <laughs> You're about to have to run for your life. 
because you're going to be stupid and not fear a god of life and death, and you're going to try and kill him. Technically, she succeeds, but man, was that the stupidest decision you ever made in your entire life, Agreed. Lady Aboshi? Because here's the thing about Lady Aboshi. Despite the fact of this very dumb decision on her part to mm -hmm. actually take part in this thing, I don't consider her the villain. Mm-hmm. Because if you look at everything else she's done, they've been very smart decisions, or at least some of it. Yeah. I mean, you know, tearing down the entire forest to get to iron and not allowing the spirits that are trying to replant the forest, you know, actually replant mm -hmm. <laughs> and going to a lot of trouble to keep them from doing that. Um, especially when I don't see a reason for you to do that because you could allow the land to regrow afterwards. But anyway, it's beside the point. She's a little greedy in that moment, but look at the people she hired. She didn't go and get uh, people who were liked mm -hmm. or well loved for this. She went and paid all of the prostitutes. Okay. That's, that's, that's how all the ladies were. They were all ladies of the night. Yeah, agreed. And she allowed the lepers, the people who nobody wants to be around because they don't want to get the disease. Right. And have their arm fall off. <laughs> or whatever. Uh, they allow My toe fell off. Yeah. She goes and hires these people, these people who had no future. Yeah. In reality. And she says, come with me. We're going to go to this other place. And yeah, you're going to have to work hard. You're going to do all us. You're going to have to be a busy person. But you're going to live a better life over here than you're living right here. Indeed. She goes and hires these people. She has no reason to. Yeah, I mean, they're easy people, but... And they're the people most likely to want to get up and leave their hometown because they're not exactly in a good situation in the first place. Indeed. So, yeah, they are easy labor to get a hold of. But she's saying that she treats every single person in that town, including Gon Gonza, who I wanted to see slapped around a couple hundred times. <laughs> she treats them all with respect. Yeah. She even treats uh, Ashitaka mm -hmm. with a lot of respect, even though she gets extremely frustrated with him. Especially mm -hmm. since he's not on her side, but he's also not on the side of the wolf spirits either. Yeah. I just like how this character, who is very well thought... When I looked up this quote, that quote I read, it was on the villain's wiki is where I found it. Really? She's not really a villain. She's made a lot of... She makes some bad choices, but she's not the villain of this movie. And I'll get, on, get into that here in a in it when we get to dislikes because yeah there is one character who is the villain who does not get the consequences coming to him that he should agreed but we'll get to that in a minute this lady aboshi while she is technically the antagonist the primary antagonist of yeah. the story i guess i don't really see her as such and the fact that in this moment is and th th that moment is where she's the most foolish in this is when she decides, I know enough that I'm going to kill a god. Yeah. And she realizes almost immediately after firing, that was stupid. <laughs> and you know who still says they're all foolish for not killing god, essentially? Mm -hmm. The actual villain of the film, Jigo. Yeah, Jigo. Who I hate with a fiery passion. <laughs> <laughs> but he's the real villain of this movie. And his final line is, well, I give up. You can't win against fools. Who's the foolish one here? The one trying to keep you from killing God? Kill your local God? Or the one who's saying there is no God and we shouldn't care? The guy's an atheist. True. And I'm not saying atheists are stupid. Or no, saying they're not. Are, I'm praying for y'all is all what I'm saying. True. <laughs> uh, because when you get right down to it, as Christians, now bear in mind... I don't believe in the forest spirit. I don't believe in boar gods. Mm -hmm. I'm just taking what I can from this and rolling with it, essentially. Yeah. Coming like, up with yeah. a, an actual spiritual truth from that is not really in the film, but it kind of is. You know what yeah. I mean? Attempting to kill God is a very foolish thing to do. Yeah. And it's the foolish thing, most foolish thing Lady Eboshi does in the entire film. Mm. And who is the one character who is actually trying to stop all the killing and all the hatred 
Who's the one character try, actually trying to end the, everything here peacefully? Our main, our, uh, the, Ashitaka. Ashitaka, the prince. Yes. And he's the one who makes all the smart decisions in this film. Everyone else is pushed on by anger and hatred, and mm-hmm. they all make foolish decisions Indeed. to feed that anger and hatred. And I'm not saying Ashitaka does not experience anger and hatred himself because the animation on his character is so good Mm -hmm. and the even with and and the acting you listen the english dub the acting has done so well that you can actually feel his anger when it happens yeah but he never acts on that anger indeed or like the worst thing he does when he's acting on that anger is he picks up son and pushes the door open so he can leave and without her getting killed. Yeah. Or pushes or bends that katana up like it's a spaghetti noodle. Or really a ramen noodle since we're Japanese. Right. Here. But I just appreciate how there is spiritual truths in this film, even though they don't intend them to be. Agreed. And the stupidest thing, the the the, the biggest truth you can you can get from this is don't try to attack God. Yeah, you just want It's to be- very foolish. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> and if it's not going to be a good time if you somehow succeed. You're not going to succeed. God is immortal. Yeah. And omniscient uh, and uh, omnipresent. omnipresent and omnipotent, meaning all-powerful. You ain't going to kill God. No. And you're not going to defeat God. That's not how this works. Yeah. This isn't God, obviously. The Forest Spirit is not God. He is a god as in little g god not the actual god don't right. don't hear what i'm not saying is right what i'm trying to say right so yeah the boat the stupidest decision is the one where they were not fearing god good point good point what is your third like my third like and i actually wrote it down so you did take some notes i did take some notes while you were talking about your third like <laughs> I was like, hold on, what do I like about this one? What do I like? All right, so my I, th- I did feel you were slightly distracted, but yes. that's fine. All right. What's new? Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. All right, so there are my people thir- who don't know the beat. Most everyone <laughs> watching this has no idea where we got that from. <laughs> All right, so my third uh, my third dislike is what I'm calling like. like that's what I'm gonna say. Like uh, what I'm calling not completely healed. So when I'm going to butcher his name, Ashitaka. Yes. Ashitaka. Ashitaka is shot when he's leaving Iron Town mm-hmm. and son. Who's the, who's the, uh, the princess. Yes. Son. Son. Thank you. Um, is be like, uh, carries him to what is the place that will they, uh, all I heard, all I saw a record of it being called was the pool of the forest spirit. Yeah. Pool of the forest spirit. So in that, the, the uh the the forest bear the the forest god in air quotes um like heals how do you pronounce his name again sorry ashitaka ashitaka thank you i am terrible with names Let's ashitaka call him ash ashitaka <laughs> i don't want to i don't want to mix him up with a very bad pokemon trainer <laughs> ooh Who birds <laughs> no one's disagreeing with you <laughs> Don't you know the best Pokemon trainer ever shown in all the Pokemon anime is James of Team Rocket? Okay. <laughs> More on that topic later. later. So Ashitaka be like he the the force god in air quotes uh take you know uh heals his bullet wound. Mm-hmm. But doesn't remove the curse because it's not time to remove the curse. It's not time to remove the curse. So and using more of a theological viewpoint, the idea that when, when we are saved by Christ, I guess we are healed from, we are healed from our iniquities from the, the sins that separate us from God. But God does not take away all of our problems. Mm-hmm. He doesn't take away the, the burdens of our lives or the, the consequences of our actions. Or to use a biblical phrase, the thorn from our side. Exactly. Exactly. There, there's a ver- there's a verse in um, in uh, I think it's like Romans, I believe, where uh, Paul is talking about, you know, like he said, like the uh, the like the thorn in his side that mm-hmm. that he wishes God would remove, but God isn't going to remove it. Uh, so he's the idea that we we do things that we don't do, and all these great things that um, that 
yes, God saves us from our the damnation of hell and uh, allows us to have a relationship with him through Jesus' death and resurrection. But he does not remove everything from our lives. Like I've heard one person say before, like once you, once you are saved, you will no longer have problems. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're the like, yeah, you got some really bad. The yeah, I got some really bad theology in that. But, uh, I, I, I found that when just thinking about that, when you were talking about your number, your number three, I was like, it's like, that really fits with the theological system, the mm-hmm. uh, theological idea that, God is going to remove the thorn because he wants us to rely more heavily on him yeah. when, when those things get rough, when things get rough or because if we removed all the iniquities of our lives, be like, it would be, there would be no need to rely on him daily mm-hmm. because if we do not strive to be more like him and be like the, the notion that to be more like him is to, uh, the idea of, sanctification to be more like Christ is to, is to, uh, endure those trials, endure those thorns, endure those, uh, iniquities in our lives Mm -hmm. to show others that not through our own, but through Christ, that this is what our life is. It is not perfect. It is not, I am not perfectly righteous that none are righteous, none, not one. Uh, but, the idea that our that we rely on Christ even through the problems, even through the thorns, even through the the uh, the plank in our eye. So yeah, God isn't going to remove everything in your every all your problems once you are saved. You're still going to have to deal with those things, mm-hmm. and it's just endurance and it's patience and it's trust, which is something I think we all have to learn, and yeah. we so, we're still learning. So, yeah, he, God does not remove the thorn, or in this case, doesn't lift the curse. Not yet, anyway. Well, he, the curse is lifted at the end of the film. Yeah, the curse is lifted at the end of the film. From both him and uh, Son. Son. Agreed. Because she got the demon lines, too, from the other That is true. God. Mm-hmm. Getting into our dislikes. Yes. In my opinion, the English dub of this is still very good. Okay. But there are still some issues, Okay, I would say, with the English dub of this film. The biggest one for me is it feels like about half of the actors who were voicing their lines for the English dub in this film must not have been looking at the film to know how their acting was a, was, was a little discon- disconnected from what was going on on screen. Right. Um, as much as I love Keith David's Goliath. Mm-hmm. And that's essentially the voice Keith David was doing. Yes, <laughs> for this entire film, uh, I don't think he fits Oroko that well throughout most of the film. When he's doing the big rage moments, mm. sure, fits perfectly then. But when he's just, but somehow his voice does not fit him in the quieter moments, and I don't know why that is. It just it just didn't work as well for me, especially when he's crazy or not crazy, but the uh, the uh, the emperor's men who are in are dressed in the boar carcasses of mm-hmm. his, uh, of his, uh, you know, his warriors who was just in, with him in battle. That whole the way I know he's acting kind of crazy there, but he actually f- sounds like he's not injured and about to go back into battle. Mm-hmm. It's like you should still feel a little more worn out. I don't care how much adrenaline is running through your system right now. <laughs> It, it just it, it, that didn't work. Uh, most of Jigo's lines, I don't really think fit the way his character is drawn. I need to actually go back and watch the Japanese version because I suspect that Jigo is more of a that high pitched, crazy Japanese person that you sometimes see in film. Yeah, when here he's just talking like a normal person who has a much deeper voice than it looks like the character has. If that makes sense. Yeah. His voice almost doesn't fit the character. And I, I'm not sure if that's actually what's going on. Or maybe I'm, I, uh, by this point in the film, there's been so much oddness to the English dub that I have to wonder about some of the casting. Yeah. But at the same time, I love the casting in this film. I mean, the, the, the I think it's all done well. It's just it doesn't feel like the actors knew what emotions 
the character was portraying. They right. It was almost like they were acting out the film as if they were the first people. They were the people the artists were going to base the animation off of. Right. In some cases, that's not always the case. Ashitaka, he's feel straight on. San feels straight on. Um, Moro feels straight on. Lady Eboshi is right where she's supposed to be. But some of the other characters, it's like close, but not quite. That's just, and that's just my opinion there. I got you. So, what's your first dislike? My first dislike, it's an endless cycle. And I, I know this is the point of the film, but the ending is just our characters learn nothing. Our characters be like, okay, our two main characters do learn something, yes. but everybody else around them learn nothing. Mm-hmm. Okay, so. The, well, I mean, Aboshi maybe learned how stupid it was to kill a god. Oh, I agree. But and perhaps she should, you know, be less arrogant. Yes, we hope. Agreed. So the idea, okay, so the 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 forest spirit in air quotes, the forest god uh is dead. And which how can you kill a god? That's just a weird thing to me from a Christian standpoint. How do you kill god? You have to okay. Uh, uh, me, understand. understand I, okay, I, go I, ahead. I'll explain this because Japanese gods are not gods in the way we think. Yeah, they're not even gods in the sense of Zeus and Thor and yeah. They're just more like a guardian. Of, these are more like just extremely high ranking spirits. Yeah, they can be killed. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking. They're immortal in the sense that if you don't harm them, they will live. <laughs> they will live forever. Right, but if they can still, you know, be injured. They're just a little below. I, mean, I, I don't know. I, admittedly, they are spiritual p- creatures, so I don't know how you kill a spirit. Where do they go at that point? Right. But then I'm not Japanese. Right. So I don't understand the thought process. Yeah. So the fact that uh, Lady um, Aboshi, Aboshi, thank you, Lady Aboshi, uh, says at the end, be like, "Oh, we're going to rebuild Iron Town, but better." It's like, okay. So wasn't it the same problem you were having earlier? The fact to be like you had the wolves and everybody else coming after you because you were like you were but desecrating was, the land. Right. She's spoiling the land at the beginning because yeah. that's her understanding of how she's how to get this. But now that she's uh been humbled, okay, I'll say. Maybe she's looking at it's like, okay, yeah, we need to rebuild Iron Town because this is everybody's livelihoods. In yeah, this ag- little, in the sound. Agreed. So you need to get Iron Town back up and going, mm-hmm. but perhaps we'll go about this more sustainably. Yeah. To use modern that, agreed. Uh, terminology when it comes to, you know, taking m- mining and such. I would agree with you on that. It just, to me, to me, watching this film is. You wanted them to leave Iron Town and go back to the city and be prostitutes and lepers in the city? No, I wasn't implying that. <laughs> I wasn't implying that. I mean, what else do you want them to do? No, I'd be like, yeah, it's, 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 it seems. Makes sense like, they need to rebuild town. And that's just how I right. look at it. But what do you want them to do? I don't know. <laughs> Go on parade. <laughs> Go on parade. <laughs> no, it's just the, the, the idea that, okay, so it's like, yes, I understand the, the people of Iron Town still need their jobs and the whole bit. But this was the, the same problem that, they had before so it's it seems like it, it's an endless cycle or you look at the idea of son and um but what it's go ahead more of a working with nature than just taking from nature without caring okay gotcha that's how i look at it okay I mean, perfectly she, fine it's what she means okay whether someone from this time period would actually do that very true is a second is an entirely different thing I would agree. Good agree on that. So in that regard, so in that regard, uh, I don't, I, there, there's a part of me that says, be like, uh, like maybe the humans shouldn't like rebuild iron town, but rather go do something that isn't going to disturb, you know, the, the, you know, the quote unquote, the quote, historically, that's not what exactly, exactly. I mean, They're iron not going to do that. Iron town is admittedly a fictional location yeah it's it's basically the the but, the I mean, upcoming of the that sort uh, of stuff did happen because there was industrialization in japan around this uh-huh time. agreed so i mean it was still primarily a rural culture but they were 
building guns, and there were they didn't need the iron for the the katanas. Indeed, and such. indeed. So it's not like iron was something they couldn't get away get, from. Get, get away from. They still needed the iron, much like we needed the iron. Right. So it's just more about going about it responsibly. Yeah, agreed. Completely agreed. And if you're going to have a forge, having it far away from a major metropolitan area, especially close to where you're mining, is not a bad idea. No, it's not. No, it's not a bad idea. So, yeah, that was my my, my very loosely explained understand or not understanding, but my first like was the, the endless cycle continues, mm-hmm. which is naturally historically going to happen. It's just yes. more. Yeah. Doesn't quite have the fairy tale ending you expect from a princess movie. Yeah. It doesn't. Speaking of which, this movie doesn't quite end the way I want it to. <laughs> okay. Is my second dislike. All right. But I'll also admit, could it really end the way I want it to? Because the way I want it to end is kind of how Whispers of the Heart ended, <laughs> where they fell in love right. and actually went on to live their lives happily ever right. after. Right. That was never going to happen. No. They are two different people. They do love each other. You can tell that. But they are from two entirely different points of view. Right. Um, And she's got to go back to her world. He's got to go back to his. Right. But they promised to meet up. So there's that. Also, certain people don't get what's coming to them like they should. Right. More on that in a minute. Because I'm going to go into a lot of stuff here in a minute. Right. But... No, there's no way the what ending I want for this film, the, I want for the story, right. could happen where it would make sense, where it wouldn't feel like it was uh, uh, back betraying the rest of the film. Right. I, I get that, but there's still a part of me that's like, why did the forest spirit technically die when they returned the head to it? It's a god that could have remelded the head back on itself, right? That and this forest could have continued on in the way it was. And the people of Iron Town could have learned to live in harmony with the spirits of the forest. Mm-hmm. And San and Ashitaka could become a, a couple and move back to the Amishi people where he could rejoin the town. Yeah. That's what I want to happen. I yeah. want everyone to get the ending they deserve. Nobody gets the ending they deserve. Yeah. <sighs> I understand why. Doesn't mean I have to like it. Agreed. And that's my second dislike. My second dislike is what I'm calling banished. Is that, uh, crap. Ashitaka? <laughs> Ashitaka, thank you. I am terrible with names. Ashitaka is banished from his, 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 his clan, his hometown. Yeah. Because he does this great and noble thing protecting the town. Ta- right. Yeah. Protecting the, protecting his home, protecting his family. And like he's he's cursed in order, and by okay, so you are going to sacrifice your royal lineage just because and say, oh, you are dead to us now because you have done this great and noble thing. It's not because he did this great and noble thing, right? It's because he is now infected with something that it will not just kill him but kill everybody in the ta- in that community, right? For the sake of the community, he has to leave. Yeah, I mean, I get that. Now, granted, at the end of the film, mm-hmm. assuming that there is some way he could be reborn into the clan, yeah, I he he's not uh, no longer a danger to the clan. Yeah, but at the beginning of the film, he has to leave so that he doesn't end up becoming more of a danger to the town because he could. I mean, my, my, the way I read this is that infection, mm-hmm. yeah, it will kill him. Yeah. But after he goes on a demonic killing spree, right. killing everybody else and infecting them. Yeah. This is at a time period. They, they have no way of healing. Oh, yeah. I can agree this. with that. Yes. So that's why they have to banish him. Mm-hmm. It's not that they want to. It's plainly obvious. Oh, yeah. They yeah. Don't obviously. Want yeah. To. Yeah. Yeah. But what else are you going to do? And to be fair, as far it's if you're going to, they're never going to find out if he lives or dies because of the time period this takes place during. Right. There's no way of knowing. So it's essentially he ha- he has to be dead as far as the community is concerned because now is the time to mourn him. Yeah, I would agree. I would agree with you on that. I completely agree. 
Completely agree. Because there's no way he can come back. It's not like the Israelites no. who, when they were ceremonia- ceremonially unclean, had to leave the village. Right. Until they could come back. Because, I mean, even the lepers and the Israelites could not ever come back. Right. They stayed with the troop, but always from a distance. Yeah, that is true. Anyway, sorry. No, be like, you you, be like, mm. you made some good points. Made some good points. And I thought about those. It was just the way it was phrased. The the notion, it's like, uh, a, they, they were heartbroken the way they had to do it. They mm-hmm. were. But the, that's the only way their culture would allow for him to yeah, be exactly. banished. Yeah, exactly. For whatever reason, exactly because they say later, or like they say during that scene, is that according to our customs that you I'd be like you are we cannot watch you leave. We cannot watch you, you, you are leave dead to, to us. us. Yeah, it's not because they want him to be dead. It's because they have to think of him that way, or otherwise yeah. they will chase after him. Yeah, that is true. Like his sister did. Yeah, very true. All right, so yeah, that's my number two. All right, I'm sorry, I keep. No, you're good. Defending the film from no, your dislike. You're, you're good. You're good. Uh, my third f- dislike for this. The true villain of this film doesn't get affected by any consequence other than he doesn't get to take the head of the spirit god back to the emperor. Yeah. He just goes on living his life as if nothing happened other than he was unable to go. I mean, what assumes he may have had to report back, but it's like, yeah. well... It's not my fault that they, you know, gave the head back and now the forest spirit is dead and there's nothing we can do about it. Sorry, Emperor, you're going to have to die like everybody else. Mm. But there's nothing about... Sorry, Jiro, that's the guy's name. There, He gets no, no consequence. He doesn't even get a hand slap. The worst he gets is he trips and says, fine, take the head. Uh, there's nothing I can do to stop you at this point, essentially. Mm. It's like... And his last line is, I give up. You can't win against fools. You didn't learn your lesson, you ignorant fool. You. You're the fool in this situation. You tried to kill a god for your own gain. You should have been killed. <laughs> you should have been Gastoned out of this film. Oh, God. Yeah, agreed. While shouting, fools, we could live forever. At least the emperor will. <laughs> Uh, especially after it's his actions that not only killed the forest god, killed most of the forest with no idea if it was ever going to come back or not, caused half of the people who were trying to escape Iron Town yeah. while the spirit god's decaying corpse was flowing through and killing everything it touched with, taking out half the people who were living in Iron Town because they accidentally went the wrong way on the path. Yeah. It's like, this is all Jiro's fault. Yeah. The entire film, well, not the entire film, but the crux of this film is Jiro's fault. And he doesn't even get a slap on the wrist when everything goes down. He just happens to be away from everybody else. He gets his one line that you know, oh yeah, he's still alive. He gets his last line and then movie's over. It's like, Jiro, you need to be attacked by a by a wolf, <laughs> or an ape, or an ape, or a boar, or any giant animal god who happens to still be alive that perhaps we just didn't get a chance to see and just shows up at the last minute because it was running late. Perhaps a giant sloth. <laughs> giant sloth. It was running late for the battle, so that's why I didn't make it there in time. Oh look, here's the bad guy. I need an, I need a snack. <laughs> Hmm. Oh, was he the bad guy? I didn't realize. He's the one who killed our god? Fine. You don't have to worry about him no more. Tastes like chicken. Yep. That's not what happens. He goes on and lives his life as if nothing were a care in the world to him. He doesn't even get cursed. No, he doesn't. He gets nothing. He's a pain in the arse. <laughs> I hate this guy, and he doesn't even get anything coming to him. Now, granted, assuming this is a Christian, this is actually taking place within Christianity somehow. Yeah. Vengeance is the Lord's. Mm -hmm. So despite the fact this guy tried to kill... No, I'm not going to go there because that could come off as heresy. Yeah. Let's not go there. Yeah. But I am assuming, I don't know exactly how the spiritualism in Japan works, but I assume there's a hell like place like so many other places are and perhaps he'll face a judgment there i hope 
also the emperor probably, but technically the Japanese emperor is a god in there. Thanks. So let's just yeah let's move on. Move on. What's your third dislike? I really don't have another dislike. Okay, I really don't. Then I guess we need to go out and rate this thing. All right. I'm giving this film a nine point five. All right. I actually absolutely, absolutely love this film. There are some little hiccups. Right. But none of that really detract from it, except for maybe, you know, some of the voices not matching. But this is still one of my favorite Miyazaki films. Yeah. And favorite Studio Ghibli films. If not, one of my favorite animated films, period. All right. Maybe even one of my favorite films, period. 9.5. All right. Uh, I will give it a nine, a, a, a nine, a solid nine. It's a wonderful film. The fact that it's, what, two and a half hours? Two hours, 13 minutes. Yeah. And you don't even be like, most of the time when you like, oh, it's a two hour film. It feels like a three hour film at that point, but it doesn't feel that way. It's the, 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 the story runs smooth, great characters, great, like, uh, atmosphere the whole bit. It's a wonderful, great film. I really enjoyed this film tremendously. Uh, there again, little hiccups here and there. I don't think my, my dislikes were very well uh, articulated. articulated, thank you. Because Drew over here blew them out of the water. Sorry. <laughs> it's fine. That's perfectly I, fine. My point was not to blow you out of the water. No, it's perfectly fine. My point is to how these discussions usually go where you point, where one of us says a dislike and the other says, that's not as bad a problem as you're saying it is. Agreed. That's all that was meant. Yes, totally understand. That's the way this show works. So either way, yeah, this show is, a, this show, this movie is a wonderful movie. It's great. It's a classic. So go watch it. Mm -hmm. Which brings us to the end of this film. Next week, we are going to be reviewing the last film of Miyazaki Month, mm -hmm. My Neighbors, the Yamadas. And so our trivia question for the next episode, which I will post after the show, so keep an eye out for it. I think I learned my lesson from last time about trying to rush it. What is, what is this movie based on? So join us next week for that when we review uh, My Neighbors, the Yamadas. And uh, join us then. Uh, as far as I know, that's about it for the show. Yeah, I think so. So uh, in the meantime, this has been Drew. This is Jacob. And we will catch you in the next frame. Come, Jacob. We must prepare for next week. Prepare for what, Drew? Same thing we do every week, Jacob. Record a podcast. Oh, boy. So where can they find you, Jacob? You can find me on Facebook at Jacob B. Heron, also on Facebook at Jacob's Daily Art Corner, where I try to draw each and every day. I don't get to it as often as I like, but uh, join me there. Also, you can find me on Instagram at Jacob B. Heron, on Twitter at Jacob Heron, and Letterbox at Jacob Heron. So where can they find you, Drew? You can also follow me on Letterbox at GGeorge759, Facebook as Drew Dodgen, uh, my Facebook page where you can see pictures I've taken at Drew's Photo Bin. You can also follow me on Twitter at GGeorge759. You can email us at thecellcastpodcast at gmail.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at cast underscore cell. You can follow us on Twitch at twitch.tv slash thecellcastgaming. You can also follow us on YouTube at Cellcast. Listen to our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Play Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and your favorite podcast directory. You can also listen to us on the Movie of the Week podcast with Jim Heron, where we talk about live action movies. And remember, Cell, cell is a single, single L. L.